It's a Valentine's Day special, and I'm here today to not just smell the roses, but bring you a very exciting recipe. We are gonna be making paneer makhni. This is a dish similar to butter chicken, but it's vegetarian. We're gonna utilize paneer and make that makhni butter sauce. When's the last time you had gluten-free naan? We're making it today. I'm gonna to show you how we have the cashews, the ginger, we have all my beautiful spices here. I have a very exciting new product that is out and available to you now. That product is the Organic Tomato Basil Sensitivo. This is a product that I had a beautiful time creating with my partnership with Memma Foods International, and I'm gonna use this to modernize a classic dish that we all love. A dish that you'd love to cook for a loved one or your partner on Valentine's Day. Maybe you don't have a partner yet. You make this, you just might. So off to the races we go. Take it just like this, and what I wanna do is rehydrate it. So I'm gonna go and slice this paneer into some nice large rectangular pieces. The paneer is a beautiful substitute if you don't wanna be cooking with meat, but I'm someone who does eat meat, and oftentimes I'll just pick paneer because I like the flavor. So I'm gonna break each piece into thirds, and this is what I'm looking for. You can cut this into any shape you want, but that's the shape that I'm looking for today. So I can stack them up two at a time, cut through, cut through, and this will give a really nice bite. Three at a time, why not? Slice, slice. Next thing I wanna do is transfer this to a vessel, make sure they're not stuck together, and I'm gonna fill this up with water. The reason why is to rehydrate this paneer a bit. Now on my Instagram channel, I have shown how to make paneer from scratch. It's not a difficult process, but today we are using a store-bought product, which is great when you're in a pinch for time. Now that our paneer is soaked with water, you can place that in the fridge, but I'm just gonna leave it right off to the side. Give my board here a little wipe. We're gonna preheat our pan and we're gonna get making this incredible recipe. Boom, into the ginger. What I can do is just remove some of the peel, but I'm gonna chop it so fine that I don't need to peel it, okay? If you wanted to, you could take a spoon and scrape off the skin, but just like, just like carrot, you don't have to. This is a personal preference thing, but the spoon really works to get into all those cracks. So this is a quick tip for you there. A lot of chefs will use spoons, or you can simply use a peeler, or you can simply use a carrot knife, okay? So look at that, really nice and clean, little bits of skin, I don't mind. And that's all the ginger that I'm gonna need for this recipe. While I break down the ginger, let us get some ghee into the pan. So this is a type of clarified butter. Uh, it's not exactly like clarified butter, because when we have ghee, the milk solids, are not removed, but they are lightly brown, giving us a nutty uh, flavor. So make sure the heat's not too high, and let's move the ghee around. Also, I wanna add in a amazing product. This is light tasting olive oil from Longo's. So if you don't want the intense aroma of an extra virgin olive oil, and even the color, we can use a light tasting olive oil. So we have a little bit of ghee, we have a little bit of our light tasting olive oil. To break down the ginger, I'm gonna slice it into thin rectangles like this, and then I'm gonna break these down into a very fine match stick. Don't want a big chunk of ginger in the dish, so what I'm gonna do is just cut it like this. I have a very gentle temperature beside me, and the ginger is gonna go right into the pan once I finally mince it. So we go across, just like this. Make sure you don't have any large chunks of ginger. And into our pan, listen for that gentle sizzle. Okay, a little bit more ghee because we can. I have a spoon over here, move the ginger around. Now we're using the Sensitivo made with all organic ingredients, okay? So there's a lot of delicious stuff in here, but what I love most about this product is that if you turn it around, 
and you look at the ingredients, you'll recognize everything. There's a lot of times we go into the store, we pick up a jar, we turn it around, and we can't recognize, we can't pronounce a lot of the ingredients that are in it. With this, you're gonna know everything that's in it. So as the ginger is cooking, it's becoming aromatic, let's come in with some cashews. You might think, Devin, why are you adding cashews, okay? But the reason why, it's gonna add a really nice nutty aroma to this dish, and I wanna get some color on it. It's also gonna help thicken up and give our sauce that typical muckney sauce, bright orange color that we really love. So some cashews go into the party. We're not cooking with onions and garlic. It may cause some discomfort. Anybody out there with IBS or a sensitive stomach, you won't be able to process it. You know when you eat East Indian food, West Indian food, you feel really bloated after. I'm trying to avoid that today with this recipe. Modernizing it just a touch to bring you a little bit closer to enjoying these classic dishes. So toss this around. And next what we're gonna do is on a low flame, come in with some of the spices that we're gonna use in this dish. A little bit of red chili powder goes into the mix. Next up, we have haldi, also known as turmeric, okay? Great for the gut. That goes in, and again, this recipe is modified to make it lighter in the spices, not to make it heavier. If I was cooking this for, you know, another application, if I was cooking it for another event, or, you know, if I was feeling dangerous, I'd put a lot more chili powder, but we're not doing that today. Sometimes I forget what everything is, I have to smell it. And that is most certainly garam masala, a hot spice blend. This has cumin, coriander, clove, cinnamon, mace, a lot of good stuff. Into the party. Next up, we have some cumin here. So a little bit of cumin goes into the party. Coriander, and I gotta tell you, the smells wafting in this kitchen right now, it reminds me a lot of my home. Boom. Coriander goes in. One of the most important ingredients that I have to add today is an ingredient called kasuri methi. This is fenugreek leaves. It smells a lot like celery and maple. This is a very important ingredient. So here the leaves are similar to Guyana thyme or any leafy ingredient. I'm gonna rub it between my hands and that's how the aroma gets released, okay? So I'm gonna add a little bit more because I love it so much and into the pan this goes. Now I wanna to gently toast off these spices, but I do not want them to burn, so I can toggle on and off the heat as I need to, and I wanna get the rawness taken out of these ingredients. This is just some salt because we wanna season. A little bit more salt goes into the mix. I'm also gonna come in and add a little bit of sugar. The sugar will help offset um, a little bit of the bitterness of those spices. We are also not cooking with onions, which would be caramelized really hard in this dish to offset the bitterness of the spices by bringing in that inherent sweetness. So I'm just compensating a little bit by adding that sugar. Now that the spices have cooked out for several minutes, the cashews have also taken on a golden brown color. It's so important that this mixture does not burn because if it burns, we are in big trouble. Now that I have everything in here, I'm gonna go in and add in our organic tomato basil, our Sensitivo. This is the product I was telling you about that has all those natural ingredients, all the ingredients that we can pronounce. There's also carrot in this as well, organic carrot, which will bring a little bit of sweetness to our paneer makhni today. So as I see a little bit of smoke start coming off the pan, now is the time that I want to deglaze, and I'm going to deglaze with the tomato sauce. So, in it goes. And I can take a splash of water and add it in and shake it up. And this way, I need to thin it out a little bit, but by doing this, I get every last drop of goodness from this jar. You may also notice that I poured the water in here from another jar. Maybe you're somebody who likes to stay really well organized. You can store really anything that you want. There's no reason to get rid of these jars. I save them all and I have a plethora of different items that I store in them. Plethora, that's a great word, okay? So water goes back over here and we wanna start bringing our sauce together by mixing everything around. So we have our sauce going here. 
I'm gonna add in a little bit more of our sensitivo. So in we go. Always make sure you listen for that pop, okay? Really important. And I'm gonna pour out, so one and a half jars is what we're working with today. Put that right back over here. And now stir this all up. This is gonna cook for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then what we're gonna do is transfer it to a vessel where I can blend it. And I'm gonna use a hand blender. You can use a food processor, you can use a, an actual tall blender, but I'm gonna use a hand blender today. So I'm just gonna give this a quick stir. I can see all the ingredients coming together. And while this is happening, I'm gonna gather the ingredients that I need for our gluten-free naan. I didn't say that wrong, we're making gluten-free naan. Check this out. So here I have gluten-free flour. I'm gonna add that into a bowl. We're gonna combine all of our dry. Make sure you get it all out there. To this, I'm gonna add two very important ingredients. We have baking powder, and we have xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is a very important ingredient because it's gonna act as our gluten when we're making this gluten-free nut. So xanthan gum, baking powder, they both go in. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt into the mix, and I'm gonna add in a little bit of sugar. Now what I wanna do is combine these ingredients. You can use a whisk, you can use a fork. Make sure you mix them up well. Go around the sides. And this is our dry ingredient, good to go. Now, next what I wanna do is crack in an egg. So here is one egg. I'm gonna give this a quick little beat. And what I wanna do is get all my wet ingredients together. So oil is gonna come in, but before that, we have a quarter cup of warm water. We wanna get all the wet ingredients together, all the dry ingredients together splash of our oil will go in and this will make up our wet ingredients okay so off to the side this goes i'm gonna whisk this together so this is our wet mixture now what i want to do is combine these two together so i can remove the forks now and it's time for me to get my hands a little bit dirty so i'm going to add the wet in and i'm just going to hold back a splash of it and this is actually how I would make paratha rotis with my mom growing up. We get all the dry and wet together in a bowl and we bring it together with our hands. So this reminds me of cooking with my mom. So it's getting really nice and thick. If you're making this at home and it's too dry, please go ahead and add some more liquid into it. And if it's too wet, you can go ahead and add a little bit more flour. So our dough is just starting to come together. I can take some more gluten-free flour in my hands and rub it together. That'll help to get a lot of the dough stuck on your hand if there is any dough on your hand. So I just rub my fingers together and that flour will help get it off. Now what I wanna do is transfer this dough to my board. So I can just kind of roll it out, make sure you scrape the sides. And now what I wanna do is give it a little bit of a knead. So I can push away and pull it towards me, push away, pull it towards me. If it's too sticky at this point, which it looks like it might be a little bit, I'm just gonna take a little bit more flour and sprinkle that on, okay? If we add too much, then we have to go in and add more liquid. So you can always add, it's much harder to take away. We want a soft dough, but nothing too sticky. So keep working it like this until we can form a nice ball. So here, our non dough has come together. See how we have a really nice ball. I'm just gonna take this and place this in a bowl to rest. I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna blend our sauce. Non dough is resting. Now's a great time. This has been simmering for about half an hour. Let's go ahead and blend it up. So I'm gonna take a ladle and transfer it to my vessel, just like this. And I'm gonna use a hand blender, but if you wanted to use a food processor or another type of blender, you most certainly can. I'm going to blend half of it now, and then the other half later. Anytime you're blending, you don't really wanna fill it up right to the top. You wanna leave some room for things to move around. Okay, so here we go. 
After about a minute of blending, look at that color. That's exactly what we're looking for. Look at the consistency of the sauce. Now that our sauce is blended, what we're gonna do is get it back into our pan. This is the pan I was using before. There's no chunks of anything, no nuts or anything like that. I'm not even gonna wipe it out. There's all that inherent flavor that's there. This beautiful golden orange sauce goes back in. My favorite tool in the kitchen is a silicone spatula because it'll eliminate so much waste. So we wanna get all of that sauce out. It smells incredible to smell the ghee with that light tasting olive oil and all those beautiful spices, the ginger I can smell. I can smell the carrot from the Sensitivo sauce. Beautiful flavors going in here. And look at this color that we have. It's exactly what I'm looking for. When you look at this, it looks romantic. It looks sexy. This is a dish that's guaranteed to impress somebody, especially on Valentine's Day. Sauce is looking delicious, coming together. A couple last steps that I wanna do while it's at a gentle simmer before we roll out our naan. Here we have our paneer from earlier. It has been drained and it's also a little bit softer now that we soaked it in the water. So the paneer can get nestled in. If you wanted to pan sear the paneer first and then add it in, you can. But today, I'm just gonna add it in like this. I find that if you're not making your own homemade paneer, it's best to just float it through your sauce, your gravy, your curry, the way that I'm doing it here. It'll remain a lot softer. Another thing that we have to do is add this in. This is a makni sauce, makan. This is butter. This is gonna give us the nuttiness, the sheen. It's gonna add some flair to this romantic dish of ours here today. Boom, in. So if you've been following along with me this whole time and you don't see this as a romantic dish, then I don't know what else to cook for you, okay? Bring this together. It's simmering, it's bubbling, that butter is melting, adding more flavor. Just as I look at this, it looks like a dish that I've loved my entire life, paneer makni, okay? If you've never heard of it before, you follow this recipe. If you're someone that hasn't been able to enjoy this before because the onions, because of the garlic, because of a lot of the heavy flavors that are in it, with this recipe, you'll be able to enjoy it without losing out on any flavor. You're not compromising today. So I'm gonna take this, transfer it behind me, keep it on a low simmer, and we're gonna bring our cast iron in, get that on a low heat. Let's portion out our naan. So here we have our dough. It has a little bit of a spring to it as I press into it. It looks just right. I'm gonna break it down into eight portions. You can break this down into different sizes that you want at home, but today we're gonna do eight. So I cut it across once. Inside looks pretty good. And we'll do that again. And I'll go across, just like how you cut a pizza, depending on how many people you're serving. For me, I eat all eight slices, okay? So I'm gonna move these off to the side of my board, just like this, and I'm gonna show you how I roll out one of them. I'm gonna press it down, and I'm gonna add a little bit of flour. So a little bit of flour is on my board. You can press this down. I need a rolling pin. That's what we're gonna do here, and I'm gonna roll this out, okay? I'm looking for like an oval type shape for this knot. And we're not using a tandoor today, we are using my cast iron pan. I don't want it too thick either, but I definitely want to get some nice color on it. I can roll it out this way too. And here we have a very nice shape. So I'm gonna roll out the rest that we're gonna get cooking them in the cast iron. Now that we have our gluten-free naan rolled out, I can take it and add it straight into my preheated pan. I'll do two at a time and I'll do two different batches. We're looking to get a really nice color on this and we're looking for it to gently swell up just a little bit. Our gluten-free naan is ready to come out. It looks great, really nice char marks on it. Check this one, swelling up really nicely. While these two are cooking, I'm gonna melt some butter and I'm gonna add some parsley. We're gonna brush this with a parsley butter. If you wanna use cilantro, if you wanna use scallion, if you just wanna use butter, if you wanna add nothing, choice is yours. It smells amazing. Mouth is watering.
bringing our planeer makhni back to the forefront. Look how voluptuous this sauce is. Don't do that, okay? We're cooking for someone that we love today. So mix this around, just bringing it right back up to temperature just a little bit. Look how beautiful our gluten-free naan came up. Nice and charred and really tender. Smells beautiful too. To take the naan to the next level, we're gonna chop up some parsley. Now that our parsley is chopped up, I can add that into some melted butter, just like this. And then we can brush our naan. So I'll just transfer my naan to the cutting board. And we can take this, give this a stir while I'm looking. And now I can brush this butter with parsley. This will take this gluten-free naan to the next level and also give it a very traditional look. So if you're someone that has problems digesting gluten and naan was a reach for you before, now you can enjoy it with this wonderful recipe. Look how beautiful these look. Gluten-free naan, plated, good to go. I'm gonna put that right here while I plate up our delicious paneer makhni. Romance is in the air, folks. And we're gonna take a beautiful few spoons of this and fill up this dish. Look at the consistency of our sauce. The paneer is just holding its shape, which means that it's gonna be super tender, exactly how we want to enjoy it. Look how beautiful this sauce is as we pour that over. The cashews have done their job. All the spices have done their work. But most importantly, this was made without onions and garlic. Two ingredients that are always, almost always used when creating this type of dish. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it looks pretty when you're plating it. The final garnishes could be heavy cream. I'm not gonna do that today, but methi, kasuri methi is always going to be a beautiful garnish. Paneer makhni and naan is a recipe. It's a dish that maybe you haven't been able to enjoy in the past. Now, with this modified rendition on this classic, I hope that you can enjoy it just the same way that I do. Again, using our star Sensitivo made with all organic ingredients, no onions, no garlic. If you are someone who suffers from some discomfort or bloating from eating onions and garlic, then this dish is definitely for you. This you can enjoy with your loved ones, with that special someone, with your family, or even if you're by yourself like me on this Valentine's Day, you can enjoy it too. Really hope you enjoyed this recipe. All the ingredients and parts are in the caption. Go ahead and give this a go. Make it for someone that you love. Oh man. Mm. Chef Dev signing off. Give this one a go. Mad love.